Pain's amazing. <sighs> oh, sorry. Squashed the bug with my hand. I didn't even know. I'm just trying over. <laughs> Welcome back to Sikistan. Welcome back to yet another episode of We Asked You to Ask Us Questions. Then in the answering of that question, somebody else asked the question in a video. Well, this wasn't. This was someone making... This might have been a general No, video. this is someone making an anarchy comment. Actually, it was an Will you read comment. out the anarchy comment there if you have it? It's an anarchy comment. Will I name him? Will I name Aiden Davis? Well, anyway. <laughs> I see what you did there. So. No, you got me. WF. WTF. Does gear have to do with pulling with a rounded back? That's just stupid. I think he means what the fuck does gear have to do with pulling with a rounded back? So this was on the Russian Dream Team video where we were. It's called the Russian Mainlifting Dream Team. So it was on a video where one of the Russian mainlifters. I uh, cannot remember his name. I'm going to say Max. Maxi something. Rijat maybe I don't. Know. He um, he was pulling with an uber rounded back, so literally like almost kyphosis in the mid and upper back in the pull of the satch. And we said something along the lines of, "Oh, that's uh, a classic symptom of gear. Something you can do when you take a lot of gear, you can kind of get away with this." So there's a couple of different reasons. So sometimes when athletes take gear, and it's something we've talked about before in our weightlifting commentaries, you know, where we've talked about people's weightlifting technique, most people appreciate what we're talking about. Sometimes people say, yeah, well, you're not even snatching 180 and stuff like that. But you know when we're talking about their technique, and we say oftentimes we see people lifting heavy weights in spite of and not because of. Sometimes we do see this, uh, we see this because as, uh, as a result of gear. We see them getting away with things that they typically would not be able to get away with if they were not taking performance enhancing drugs uh the simple fact of the matter is performance enhancing drugs work incredibly well and so when you get to a sport like weightlifting where a lot of power and a lot of speed and a lot of aggression can get us very very far especially in terms of training if we're looking at things like heavy snatches and we're wearing you're using straps we're in our home gym environment it doesn't matter how many times we miss something as long as we eventually make it when we're in this kind of environment we take a lot of drugs and a lot of performance enhancing drugs we can really get away with a lot of discrepancies in our technique and oftentimes we see in weightlifting the slightly rounded kyphosis as a result of a few other things which we'll go through but we'll also see it with people who do do take quite a bit of performance enhancing drugs is they're able to get away with this poorer position now it's not a make or break position but it does seem to be a symptom of a thing where we sometimes see people who get very, very jacked from weightlifting and taking performance enhancing drugs is we see this kind of rounded back position. Uh, again, it's not a terrible position, but it's not a great position either. And it's something they do kind of, it's just like a symptom of it. The person thought we were kind of joking or they thought we were, I don't know what they thought we were saying. We were kind of saying it tongue in cheek, but we we're also not joking as it is a thing that does appear sometimes. So we're going to run through some of the reasons why this might happen. It, is it really a direct result of taking performance enhancing drugs? Or is it something that appears uh, alongside of it, but it's not actually a correlation or a causation, I should say. This is very much a, a kind of multi-component thing going on, right? There's a few different reasons. It's probably three main reasons. And then there's a few peripheral things going on as well at the same time. The first of these is that a lot of the time when you're taking performance enhancing drug, it's an androgenic drug. It, androgen is literally to make more masculine. So you'll see things like increased levels of muscular tightness. You will have increased joint integrity coming from stiffer and tighter ligaments and tendons around the joints. This will very much alter how people move. It will alter how sprinters' feet will react when they'll hit the floor. It's why a punch or a tackle from somebody who's who's on large amounts of performance enhancing drugs will feel different than a punch or a tackle from somebody who's not in the same way where a punch or a tackle from a male will feel very very different from a punch or a tackle of a female it's just a different system and those drugs push people in that direction a small bit more the next way it tends to alter tightness tends to alter um, movement patterns is the fact that you can train so much due to, to these substances. So it's not just, people oftentimes think of, of kind of steroids or performance enhancing drugs as a product you take and you get a certain outcome from it and that outcome is immediately that you're better at sports performance or you jump higher, run faster, hit harder. Most of the time people are taking, or a lot of the time people are taking a performance enhancing drug it simply enables them to train an awful lot more. So whether that's more mileage running on the road each week, 
whether that's more sessions in the gym, whether that's more volume in each session, it just tends to give you that ability to do a hell of a lot more. Now, why would that change things like tightness? Why would that change motor patterns? You have to imagine that the environment Owen just talked about there. So an environment where you tend to train a hell of a lot, you tend to be in the gym for probably 14, 16, 20 sessions per week. You're now pulling on heavy barbells all the time. You tend to get away with things, so misreps don't matter hugely. And this is certainly one of the areas where that kind of round the back starts coming into weightlifting an awful lot more. You'll get people whose upper back might be quite tired or their upper back might be fatigued and they get used to moving in this kind of secondary position. So a secondary position will be when we're moving towards a, a kind of dominant side or a dominant uh, motor chain or motor pattern, people with weak quads will tend to bend their back a small bit more in a deadlift and so on and so forth. The last area of the kind of three main ones is just general hypertrophy, general yakidness um, from being on gear. When we get bigger, when your shoulders get bigger, your upper back gets bigger, when your midline and your gut gets bigger, Whoa, just, Jesus. just more difficult to be in the bottom position of a snatch or in the bottom position of a clean before you pull on it. Larger people find it more difficult to get down closer to the floor and be in a good position. It's why you'll see a lot of uh, really heavy powerlifters when they're deadlifting will actually round over into the deadlift. Now, in the case of powerlifting, that restricted range of motion can actually be quite positive. It will have some good affect, but in weightlifting, it's not really the same thing. It doesn't really have any positives. There's nothing really... Uh, Fucking hell. What? Well, pointing thumbs at me, Jesus I Christ. Didn't. Jesus Christ. Uh, in weightlifting, it's not really uh, the same level of um, of advantage to have a restricted range of motion. So this is an exclusive to the upper back rounding portion. It, this could be any number of any athletic endeavor. So anything with poor motor patterns or poor positions is that you can get away with things that may typically be more injury risk for the average person who's not on performance sensing drugs. So we're not just talking about the mid back rounding here, but we could talk about different uh, different positions in any number of sports. The fact of the matter is, if you do use a lot of performance sensing drugs, your joints, ligaments and muscles can recover a lot faster than the average person. Or they can also take higher levels of forces or take more egregious, poor motor patterns for longer. And thus, they can recover a little bit faster and deal with these poor positions for a longer period of time before you might see someone get injured. So if the same person did the same amount of volume with the same poor or less high quality positions in any number of sports specifically weightlifting uh we'd see that person who's not on performance sensing drugs likely get injured before that person who is on performance sensing drugs so this round the back position might be exposing something might be exposing uh maybe your uh rhomboids for anyone who's torn a rhomboid you know it's incredibly painful i've torn both when a within a two month period of each other. And I can honestly say it was one of the most painful injuries I've gotten. So if you're in that poorly exposed position, uh, if they're elongated in that position, maybe your rectus spina, rhomboids, lower traps, something like that is exposed to higher number of repetitions, especially in weightlifting, something highly dynamic. You're not on performance sensing drugs, then the likelihood is that they will get injured a little bit sooner. And so we'll give you this kind of self-corrected, okay, I need to strengthen my upper back. I need to correct these positions. I need to put them in a better position, thus to avoid getting these injuries in the future. Whereas if we're using a lot of performance enhancing drugs, uh, you kind of, you, you may never even enter this thought process. So maybe something you never think about. You know, you can't rehab or prehab every single muscle and joint and movement in your body before every session. And we only interact with the ones that we've had injuries on before. And so in these scenarios, if we do use a lot of performance enhancing drugs, for example, the Russian lifter in this case may have never had an issue with his upper back, or if he did, it may be something that hurts for like one or two days a week, and then due to a variety of different PEDs, it may not have hurt, it may have been perfect the next day, so it may have never been an issue for him throughout most of his career, as the likelihood of, in a state-sponsored doping, for example, it was likely very early on he began using performance enhancing drugs, it was never something that kind of entered those realms, and so if you are using a lot of performance enhancing drugs, PEDs, these kind of poor positions will not be something you'll become aware of because it's just so much less likely for you to get injured on in those positions or it's something that's so far down the line that it will take years before it's even an issue for you. It may happen eventually, but in a lot of circumstances, it may not. 
The last point then, and this is kind of probably more in the general sense than rather with this specific group of, of Russian lifters is the rate of progression, obviously when you're enhanced is so much faster than when you're not. The thing you, you probably have to consider with the, the national team kind of or the international caliber athlete is that rate of progression still affects them. So that rate of progression isn't now necessarily about learning the snatch or learning the clean and jerk, but now it's about getting back in shape and just the speed people get back in shape with tends to be so, so fast. So you're talking about going from a 190 kilo snatch down to when they're in their off season, probably a 120 or a 130 kilo snatch, then going back up and getting to probably 170 or 175 kilos in the snatch within the first six to 15 weeks of training, like very, very restricted timescales. And that is one of the areas where these kind of poorer motor patterns get snuck back in uh you don't don't tend to notice them as much because it is so accelerated and it's so fast getting back in there so if you have any other questions about this in relation to maybe any other areas of sport or weightlifting or whatever in relation to this topic please leave them alone we'll definitely get them if there's a significant one we'll try and make a video out of it uh for anyone else watching in terms of weightlifting we have our four day weightlifting camp coming up in london april the 15th to the 18th at the time of recording, we have the camp is technically full, preliminary list, so we haven't locked anyone ever yet. So there is still a possibility that you could get a spot. So four days of weightlifting in London, Ascension training. Um, I'd say probably by the time you see this video, it'll probably be worked up, but I would definitely email and see if you get on the list as there may be in the next few days before it's finalized an opportunity to get on it. So we only got 12 spots currently have 12 people signed up for it but i would definitely email just in case you get an opportunity as it's all to play for just yet merchandise photos have been taking taken website will be loaded um i'd say possibly i'm gonna say late this week or early next week they will be live so without a doubt for confident that this is it's coming soon so remember everyone on facebook will know probably the day before and then we'll do a youtube live stream maybe youtube post and an instagram post as soon as they're live and then it's all to play for no one's got early access no one's got any dis discounts it's all to play for you can get it hopefully don't crash the website please god the only thing i wish we could do is remember when they used to need old gym equipment and sales yeah and they'd have a yard and they'd open the, the gates at like 6 a.m and everyone would run in no i'd love if do you ever see those videos no no uh, rogue used to them where they'd sell off all their equipment mm -hmm. and you'd have a yard and people would queue up outside and they just open the gates and people would sprint in Nice. So sometime we'll have a physical merch sale. Thanks for watching.